Welcome to the Organic Chemistry Podcast, Dr. Brian Lloyd's Scribblecast of Organic Chemistry Lectures and Solutions to Homework Problems. In this Scribblecast lecture, we'll be taking a look at the second in non-saponifiable or derived lipids, those lipids that are not based on fatty acids. Remember, saponifiable lipids were derived from isoprene. We looked at the terpenes last Scribblecast lecture, and today we're going to take a look at the second class, steroids. Steroids are found in all organisms. In man, they function as sex hormones, emulsifying agents in lipid digestion, and in the transport of lipids across membranes. To be a steroid, you must possess the following ring system. The ring system has a fixed numbering scheme, as I shall indicate. It consists of several fused six-membered rings and one fused five-membered ring. There is a CH3 located here and one located here. If you have this basic ring system, you are considered to be a steroid. The rings are labeled ring A, B, C, and D. They are also numbered as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, oops, sorry, 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 8, 9, this carbon, right here is 10 and then we have 11 12 13 14 15 ah, sorry 14 15 16 17, and the two methyls are 18 and 19. So it's a rather odd mem uh, numbering system. As you noticed, I made a few careless errors as I was proceeding, so be careful when you learn this numbering system. In order to be a steroid, you must have this basic ring structured framework, also this fixed numbering system and the two methyls as indicated. Most steroids originate from the linear triterpene squalene. Squalene can be drawn as follows. Squalene undergoes a series of systematic changes. The first is oxidation. The oxidation process actually creates an epoxide. So I'm going to write up here, step one, epoxide formation I'll use a superscript N for formation epoxide formation via oxidation So essentially, at this double bond, an epoxide forms. Now, the epoxide is subsequently protonated to form an oxonium ion. Bridging oxonium ion. And so it becomes an OH plus. What happens next is a complicated series of ring closures. These pi electrons located here attack that carbon. In fact, I'm going to draw the electron movement in a different color. 
so it's a little easier to see. So these pi electrons go here. These pi electrons attack that carbon. These pi electrons attack that carbon. And these pi electrons attack that carbon. This causes this bond to break to create a lone pair. When that happens, you actually get six membered ring here, six membered ring here, six membered ring here. A five membered ring here. Now, off of the five membered ring, a positive charge exists at this carbon. We have, because of the ring closures, CH3 here, we have a CH3 here, we have a CH3 here, and we have a couple CH3s here, and our OH. There. Now, what interestingly happens, okay, so step three, I'm going to call, when we formed this, was ring closure and carbocation formation. Ring closure. Carbocation formation. and we get a carbocations. Now carbocations can undergo 1-2 shifting. In fact, a series of 1-2 shifts can actually happen here. We have H's located in a variety of positions. We have an H here, we have an H here, and if we do these, we can do a 1-2 shift of this hydrogen there. This hydrogen can shift over this methyl can shift up there, and this methyl can shift over to here. A series of 1, 2 methyl and hydrogen shifts. Plus 1, 2 hydrogen shifts. A whole series of them. When that actually happens, we get a new carbocation. So the plus disappears from here and moves to this position. When this H shifts over, it's now at this position. When the methyl shifts, we get a methyl here, and it's in this position. And when that methyl shifts, it disappears from here, and we get a methyl here. And we have a plus in this position. Now at this point, if we lose a hydrogen, note there is a hydrogen, I'll draw the bond up here, at H, if we lose this H and move those pi electrons towards the positive, we'll create a double bond in this position. So if you like, the next step, step five, is deprotonation and alkene formation. Deprotonation 
and double bond formation. So five deprotonation. and alkene formation. And I'll use a superscript N for formation. So deprotonation and alkene formation. This molecule, as drawn here, and uh, fix that double bond, as it is shown here, where the OH is actually up, so there's a wedge here, is known as lanosterol. So lanosterol can be generated from the triterpene squalene through this five steps indicated. Now, lanosterol is the precursor of cholesterol. I'll raise squalene and I'll draw a cholesterol so you can see the similarities and structures between the two. Cholesterol is the most abundant steroid in the animal tissues. Cholesterol and lanosterol are members of the subgroup of steroids called sterols, or steroidal alcohols. The steroid alcohols contain a hydroxyl group at C3 of the ring. And there's an 8 to 10 carbon hydrocarbon side chain at C17. Lanosterol occurs in the waxy coating of wool as an ester. Let's um, draw cholesterol. And the double bond has shifted in cholesterol. It is now located here, and it's lost that extraneous methyl group. Cholesterol itself is very similar in structure to lanosterol, so make sure you know the difference. Cholesterol is a white solid. It's insoluble in water, but soluble in ether, benzene, and chloroform. It's a major constituent of gallstones. It's a component of cell brain membranes and forms about one-sixth of our dry, dry weight of nerve and brain tissue. We can obtain it commercially by extraction of spinal cords of cattle. It serves as insulation to nerve fibers and in the brain and nervous tissue. It can act as a special transport agent for unsaturated acids in the blood. Too high a concentration of cholesterol in the blood can lead to precipitation in the circulatory vessels. This can cause high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, which is an abnormal deposition of cholesterol, causing a fibrous black plaque coating in the arteries. Now, the major breakdown product of cholesterol major breakdown product of cholesterol is bile acids. Bile acids are highly effective detergents because they contain both polar and nonpolar regions. If you like, they act like soaps. They're synthesized in the liver, stored and concentrated in the gallbladder, and released in the small intestine. Bile salts are the major constituents of bile, and bile salts solubilize dietary lipids. They act as a soap, if you like, to dissolve those fats that are insoluble. They emulsify the fats by acting as emulsifying agents. 
They solubilize dietary lipids. Yeah, if you want to understand emulsification, look back in the pod earlier podcast dealing with soap. Okay. Because they're solubilized, emulsified, these lipids are more accessible to the proteins that catalyze the breakdown. Enzymes called lipases, and they so the solubilizing process facilitates their absorption. Okay. Well, let's redraw cholesterol. So this is cholesterol. Now cholesterol can undergo a series of structural changes. Cholesterol is a biochemical a precursor to the molecule pregnenolone, which looks like this. Notice the similarity in structure to cholesterol. Pregnenolone alone is a key component in the production of all other human sex hormones. It is converted to the androgens these are the male sex hormones It's converted to the estrogens which are the female sex hormones. It can also be converted to the progestins. Hormones involved in pregnancy. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these, some of the structures of these molecules, progesterone, testosterone, and estrone. Let's take a look at some androgens, both na naturally occurring and synthetic. Remember, the androgens are the male sex hormones. They impart male characteristics. Larger muscle bulk. More hair, facial hair, etc. All male sex hormones, to some degree, have an anabolic effect. They encourage muscle development. The molecule drawn here is testosterone, a male sex hormone. It is the principal male hormone. If testosterone is metabolized, it can be converted into the molecule androsterone. Very similar, similar to testosterone.
Now, some synthetic male hormones are derived to enhance the anabolic effect. They want to reduce the androgenic properties, such as increased facial hair and that, but they want to use a drug that builds muscle. The problem with such drugs is organs such as the heart are mainly muscle. Production of more muscle in an organ such as the heart can lead to early heart attack, amongst other potential problems. A synthetic anabolic steroid related in structure to testosterone is this molecule, a synthetic anabolic. This is called meth androstenolone. Methandrostenolone is a synthetic anabolic steroid designed to enhance muscle development. Unfortunately, prolonged use can lead to harmful medical conditions. The estrogens impart female characteristics. There are two that we're going to look at, and they do have similarity in that the first ring has become aromatic. Also, one of the CH3s from the steroidal ring system have been lost. And you have a phenolic OH in this position. This molecule is estradiol. If we change the OH in this position to a double bond O, keeping everything else the same, we produce the female sex hormone estrone. Okay, those are two examples of the female sex hormones, estrogens. Estrogens impart female characteristics in the maturation of the female. The role of steroids in pregnancy has led to research in the uses of compounds of birth control reagents. For example, in the progestins, the molecule I drew, pregnenolone, can be converted to progesterone. Progesterone has a, in its first ring a similar st structure to testosterone.
and it has a C double bond O, CH3. Structurally, it's similar to testosterone in that the OH is now this acyl group. Progesterone is a sex hormone that suppresses ovulation. Because of this, similar synthetic drugs have been designed to mimic the behavior of progesterone, trying to reduce known side effects. For example, this molecule is an example of a synthetic progestin and it is called nor ethine nodrel If you simply reposition re the double bond in the first ring, keeping everything else the same, put the double bond there using the OH and the alkyne, You have nor ethin drone. If we replace the C double bond O's with some ester groups. This synthetic progestin has a ring system similar to an estrogen rather than a progestin. But it has the groups off the end hmm. Okay. Of course, I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm going to have to rub this off. It retains the C triple bond unit, the pi system, one CH3, but it has an aromatic ring in it. Instead of an alcohol group, it has an ester group in this position as well. This is known as a thionyl. A thionyl estradiol. Diacetate. The diacetate's a separate word. Synthetic progestins such as norethinodrel are used to prevent ovulation as a method of, of, as a method of birth control. Now, another group of steroids occur in the adrenal cortex, which include cortisone. They regulate a variety of metabolic processes and appear to be involved in the biochemical synthesis of carbohydrate from protein. 
They are also used in the treatment of inflammation due to allergies, rheumatoid arthritis, or skin conditions, irritation, inflammation conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, or even asthma. Cortisone is a steroid which has functionality such as I've stated. There's some extra double bond O's to watch for in this structure. This is cortisone. If we take this C double bond O and convert it to an OH, we have the molecule cortisol. H is down. This is cortisol. Yeah, key carbonyl group that places it in the corticosteroid family is converted to converted to an OH. If we add a double bond to cortisone, so that in ring A there are two double bonds, keeping everything the same as cortisone, then we have a molecule called prednisone. Again, an anti inflammatory. In this case, it is a synthetic anti-inflammatory steroid. Such steroids as these can be used in the treatment of inflammation, everything from asthma to eczema, psoriasis, and arthritis. Well, there you have it, a series of steroids, including the androgens, estrogens, progestins, and a group of steroids that are often referred to as corticosteroids. Well, that wraps it up for lipids. I'm Dr. Brian Lloyd. This is my scribble cast. I thank you for listening.